What's up, everybody? It's Alex from Heavy New York, invading California for NAM 2020. We are at the House of Blues for Metal Allegiance, and we are here with Bobby Blitz of Overkill. Thank you so much for your time. <laughs> In the finger, right? Yeah. Well, Hi, everybody. Good to see you. Yeah. It's so great to have you here. The Wings of War is your latest record, which, um, you know, came out uh, in 2019. You know, you have so many albums out now. What I was curious is going from the grinding wheel to this. Do you take a new approach to every album you make? Or is there kind of like a formula that Overkill tends to stick with? Well, I think the formula is excitement. I think that to be able to have opportunity and be an opportunist, you want to make the most out of that opportunity. And I think that that, you know... Uh, the, the X factor is the energy that goes into that. So you have the opportunity, you have the energy, you have the excitement, and you think you can outdo what you've done in the past. So that becomes motivational, I think, enough. Interesting. This I know that uh, The Wings of War was the first record to have Jason Bittner on drums, and being that he played in Shadows Fall, uh, did he maybe bring in some newer elements to Overkill that maybe uh, you didn't have previously? Um, I, I think he brought in uh, serious consistency with, with how he plays from part to part to part. Um, he's almost uh, machine-like with the human feel. Uh, but I don't think he brought anything in, for instance, from a, a newer metal sound. Because I, uh, Jason is tried and true cut from this stuff. Uh, he was a kid that I used to see around overkill shows when he was a, you know, a, a Berkeley student. Uh, yeah. You know, with a pair of drumsticks in his back pocket, which I always thought was really cool. I never knew his name. I've, I've said this in interviews before. I used to call him, hey, kid, how you doing? I see you got your sticks. <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, but what he brought to it was um, kind of a surgical precision with regard to how he approached the parts uh, not, that were not necessarily written for him, but were um, uh, suggested for his interpretation. One thing I was always curious about for you as a vocalist, do you sometimes need to hear music before you come up with lyrics, or can a concept maybe like help determine the outcome of the music itself? Uh, primarily, I need to hear the music, uh, but occasionally you'll get something where the, uh, the melody line is written prior to hearing anything. Uh, you know, I, I mean, those shower melody lines that people talk about or the, you know, uh, uh, singing while you're cutting the grass or singing while you're painting the house or singing while you're in the car kind of a thing, uh, that they come along and uh, sometimes they work. So, uh, but 90% of the time or even, maybe even more, it is primarily the riff and the music first. Awesome. Really interesting. You know, I've always wanted to ask this. It's great to be able to talk to a fellow East Coaster. You know, you're being from Jersey, the sixth borough, as I like to call it. Yeah. <laughs> dirty Jersey. Yeah, yeah, dirty Jersey. I'm from New York City, man. You know, we exile New Yorkers yeah. to you guys. Sorry, we collect your garbage, but. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, no, we put our garbage in Staten Island now. We, 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 that, for New Yorkers, going to Staten Island is the closest they get to going overseas. That is the Fresh Kills, right? <laughs> Isn't that the Fresh Kills landfill? That's what it's called. I believe so. I never knew why it was called Fresh Kills. You know? Yeah, I, you know, I'm probably offending some of my Staten Island friends That's all right. now. But, um, That's all right. You know, coming from New Jersey, I mean, you know, being, you know, I'm 26 years old, but I knew a lot of New Jersey bands from, like, God Forbid and Dillinger Escape Plan and, and you know, some of the emo bands in there. But was there kind of, like, a scene in New Jersey that you're com you come from? Because when it comes to classic thrash, I feel like just the only East Coasters are you guys in Anthrax. Was there, like, a scene, or did you have to kind of go outside Jersey to get Overkill's name out there? Well, for sure there was a scene, but I mean, being from New Jersey is like being part of the metropolitan area. I mean, we're only a bridge ride and a toll away. You know, yeah. it's not it's not like we're like banished to Siberia, for instance. Um, it's a quick ride in, and uh, you know, we we really cut our teeth at places like Lemoore in in Brooklyn or uh, the old Ritz, which is now Webster Hall, or even some of the smaller clubs, uh, Gildersleeves. Uh, so, well, no, I, we actually Overkill never played CBs. Really? Yeah, I mean, it was uh, Dee Dee's first band did, but we didn't. But there was also a Jersey scene, so that was the metropolitan area played by those clubs, were <clears throat> played by those bands in those clubs were was a cool thing because you could be in Queens, you could be in Brooklyn, you could be in uh, Staten Island, or you could be in Jersey, or even in Manhattan. Um, and that scene, I think, was uh, encompassed by all of that. So it wasn't just a Jersey scene. Sure, there was Whiplash, there was us, but then there was Carnivore, oh, which became Typo to some degree over in, uh, over in Brooklyn. Uh, there was the Life Agony guys. Uh, yeah. There was uh, the Biohazard guys. You know, yeah. uh, there was the cro guys. Um, there was the Anthrax guys. So there was a scene going on. And that scene, I think, really, you know, if you put a compass in... Uh, 
you know, in Times Square and you drew that kind of circle around, that's that's what uh, that compass uh, embraced. Yeah, and seeing you guys with Life of Agony, that was like an old school East Coast show if I like ever heard oh. one at the PlayStation Theater that you did. Uh, back oh, in right, 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 back in May. Yeah, 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 yeah that was a good time, yeah. Yeah, that was a great yeah, time. It was, it was just kind of like the old days, you know, it was kind of like Overkill, LOA, we had Death Angel on the bill. Yeah. I mean, it was kind of a, it was a thrash, uh, yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say hardcore fest. I mean, Life of Agony is just a heavy band. That you know, I, at this I, point. To this day, I never understand why people call them hardcore. Even River Runs Red, I never considered. Hey, one of the greatest rock and roll heavy records of all time, right? Yeah, yeah really good record. Exactly. And uh, Joey Z and Allen went to my college, so. Oh, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everybody was so happy. Jared Leto went to my school. I'm That's fucking true. Joey Z and Allen Robert. Christmas cards back and forth, or Hanukkah cards. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I should start. Um, and the final question I wanted to ask you is: I've talked to so many like new school thrash bands, like Havoc and Power Trip, sure. and you know Ex Mortis, who played today. Um, and a lot of them have cited like you guys as inspiration. When you hear on how like a new school band takes inspiration from Overkill, does that inspire you in a way, or make you look at yourself differently as an artist? Yeah, get out of the way, kid. I'm not done yet. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best response I've ever gotten. <laughs> well. <laughs> I'm still in the game. I mean, you can't win the game unless you play the game. I mean, I still take it seriously. It still excites me. I mean, your first question was about how do you write music? Well, it's really about that excitement factor, but that excitement factor bleeds into all the different things, you know, and that comes with uh, playing live. That comes with uh, managing the band. That comes with making uh, decisions with my partner, Didi, you know, for, you know, since the 90s, we've been managing ourselves and it's, uh, it's unique to invest that much of yourself into one thing you know so so hey it's a nice compliment and everything but it doesn't mean that i'm not competitive it doesn't mean that oh thanks a lot and i'm just gonna lay back and have a beer i want to bury you you know yeah. i want to <laughs> get on the stage next to me i want to bury you eventually somebody's gonna bury me i get that that's the way it works uh, but I'm not ready to give that up yet. After seeing you live, that day's not coming anytime soon. <laughs> well, so I hope not anyway. <laughs> if it does, I hope it's a lightning strike. I hope it's not this long like decline. I hope it's just boom, you're done. <laughs> what a way to go, right? <laughs> yeah, one shot, yeah. man. So before we go, I'd like to thank you so much for your time today. Great to be able to talk to you. Is there just anything else you would like to promote for Overkill in terms of tours or even some new music? I mean, you guys put out a record. Like, I, I couldn't even finish digesting the grinding wheel right when you put out the Rings of War. So maybe some new Overkill fairly soon. Or? Well, it's kind of cool for us that it's always, you know, it's always about that clock for us. You know, I mean, and you know, people have always called us a blue collar band. Blue collar people punch clocks. Mm. Uh, I think Overkill does to some degree, and it, you know, as a metaphor to come out every two years with a record, it's like punching a clock, right? But, but it's still fresh, and we're still doing that blue-collar job, in our opinion, correctly, st and still looking for ways to improve that. Uh, what we're doing uh, coming up is uh, we're, we will write this year, but prior to that will be a uh, U.S. tour, which starts in this building in Anaheim in 40 days. Um, I think it's the 26th of February. Here at the House of Blues, and we're doing a House of Blues kind of tour across the states, and we're going to end at the Wellmont Theater uh, in Montclair, New Jersey, on March 14th. We're taking this hoarder with us. Uh, by the time we get to the Wellmont, we'll have Billy Milano and MOD on there, and and uh, we're going to drag down some boys from the Bronx called Demolition Hammer. And oh, turn Angel, Angel, their drummer's my boy. Let me tell you something. It's going to be. I mean, that is one hell of a band, and that's uh, you know that was kind of the point. We were making it uh, kind of a local show, uh, except for Exhorter being from Texas. Uh, but the uh, it should be just uh, should be a fucking barn burner. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Well, Bobby, thank you so much. Alex, my pleasure. Yeah, Bobby Blitz of Overkill. Be sure to pick up the Wings of War if you haven't already. This is Alex from Heavy New York, and we'll see you next time. See you in Jersey.